laughter comes to mind. Uh, Dean was the funniest man I knew who wasn't supposed to be funny. And he would be funny doing and saying nothing. He just had that, um, that lightness about him. But that's what first comes to mind. It might have been Rio Bravo, and it might not have been Rio Bravo. It's sometimes you remember exactly, you know, where you've met somebody or the last time you saw them or whatever. And a dean just was a part of my life, um, and that's a long time ago. But I, uh, I can't remember. And since I was involved with Frank Sinatra, at the time before I had done Rio Bravo, it, it all kind of mixed together. And had I met him before, I don't remember. You know, it, it was uh, a commonplace uh, uh, thing to meet Frank's group. I mean, anyway, you know, you, so you just, uh, oh, yeah, I met him. Where? Well, I don't know. Well, I, when? I don't know. It just, it's so, oh, it was so automatic. I remember that very well. Um, my husband wrote the song. He was my husband at the time, Bert Backrack. And he wrote the song, and it had not yet come out. It was on Broadway in uh, Promises, Promises. And so when it came time to do this show and do a, a number, I, I guess it was my idea. And Lee knows probably that Bert was very unhappy with it very unhappy with it. So I remember every bit of it. It was a very quiet number, and in the show, the girl sits on the couch and wishes, oh, I'll never fall in love again, and all of that. And with Dean's show, they made a production number out of it. And I looked pretty cute, I must say. Uh, I was... Uh, I don't usually say that because it's usually not true, <laughs> but uh, I sort of moved enough to call it a dance, and uh, uh, and I did okay. But um, uh, it was hard to live with. He really, Bert was very very unhappy with it because it was not a simple sit on a bench and sing number. It was a production, and and so I I have mixed feelings about it. It was um, uh, effortless, is what it was. Uh, you know, uh, Greg Garrison had a great deal to do with the outcome of those shows. He was brilliant. And he uh, was so, I think he liked Dean so much that he, and they were, he just, he was part of Dean's skin. He just knew what Dean would do well, and uh, at, at least that was my observation. And then Dean also trusted Greg so that, you know, you would get a lot of freedom there if you have trust. And uh, so uh, the two were a great team. And uh, I don't know if it's chicken and egg time. I don't know who started it, but uh, they worked brilliantly together. Uh, no, not uh, because Rio Bravo, but we didn't uh, hang out in Rio Bravo. Uh, uh, we shot in Tucson, um, and uh, a lot of the wives and boyfriends came down to visit us. It was a long shoot. Uh, and uh, contrary to many other m movies where they all hang out together, we, we didn't. So, uh, you know, after we all went home, it was, it was hot. <laughs> it was really hot. I'm talking 125 in, in the shade on uh, shooting day. I think they, they understood each other. They were, they were quite different. You know, Dean didn't really party that much and hang out. He was pretty quiet. And when he would come in off the golf course or something and drop by, uh, he, was, uh, he was not a chatter. Uh, he didn't sit around and he just, when he sat around, he was quiet. 
He was a very quiet man. And, and Frank was, uh, you know, the, the, the leader, the boss. Uh, but they, I think they just uh, had a mutual respect and understanding of uh, the different types that they were. And they were not in competition, even though they were both singers. That, I'm sure that would never have occurred to them. Well, that's like asking me what my childhood was like. Uh, um, there's never, there would never be enough time to explain it, and you, and it's one of those things. Um, again, uh, try to, uh, you know, you remember when you met the Pope, because you, gen interesting. <laughs> Frank and the Pope, we always said, uh, oh, I remember James Bacon always said, they said, why did, why did um, Frank treat you so uh, terrific? And why would, James Bacon was a, a columnist, and he could have done bad by you and written bad, but he was a great columnist. He said, why did Frank treat you so great? Why was he so nice to you? He says, I never figured that out. I treated him just like any other god. <laughs> And so, uh, Frank, uh, Frank's um, uh, arena was so fascinating all the time, uh, it, it, just by uh, being in his presence. He had just a mag magical, magnetic presence, as you know, and, uh, and yet it was very uh, non-eventful. It was just... Tuesday, and you know, you just uh, you don't remember uh, incidents because they happened normally. It was normal living for them. Well, it was an incredible time for all of us, and I had a couple of scenes with Dean, which were uh, great pleasure. Again, he was so easy to work with. Uh, he uh, he. I'm not getting along with my husband, Danny Ocean, and Dean comes to uh, uh, kind of make me feel better. I, I don't remember quite why he... No, I think I went to his apartment. I don't remember. Anyway, uh, I got two scenes with him, and that was um, really wonderful. But the best part of, uh, of Ocean's Eleven was watching them on stage at night afterwards. It was... It was like having Elvis Presley or Michael Jackson put on a show uh, after working with them all day long. It was just wonderful, and they had a blast. I mean, they had more fun than we did in the audience. And uh, Dean was uh, as much a part of it as as Frank was, and that also they shared. You know, Frank didn't hog the thing just because he was the real leader. Uh, very, very, uh, uh, not generous, wouldn't even come to his mind. It was just not his way of hogging. You know, he was very confident with himself. Yeah, that was also uh, Sammy Davis and Joey Bishop and Peter Lawford. And Joey Bishop was the announcer, really, even though he was a comic. Uh, but um, I think he was the announcer of the show, if I remember correctly. And then they, each, they would each perform, and then they'd also mix it up. And uh, it was, it was fat because Peter was a song and dance man. People forget that about Peter Lawford. He was at MGM and did many musicals, or several anyway, and um, very handsome and, and all of that. So he, um, they, they put on a, a real genuine show. Each one performed individually and then together. And once I got to watch it backstage, and Dean was standing behind me, or whatever. Dean would have, they had a microphone backstage, and they said, you want to watch from backstage one night? And I did, and I nearly ruined the show because Dean had a microphone, and he, <laughs> Frank would be singing some love song, and Dean would just say into the microphone, which went out to the audience, what do you mean I need a dime to get out? <laughs> <laughs> to get out. In those days, it only took a dime to use the loo. Uh, I don't know what it costs now, but not a dime. And so that was the line. What do you, what do you mean I need a dime to get out? And that would be in the middle of Frank's love song. 
So the audience was just, you know, they were holding their stomachs with laughter every night. <laughs>